Are you musically gifted? Do you enjoy randomly bobbing your head with your friends? Do you struggle to see your own two feet? Do you slap or bite those who intrude on your personal space? If you answered yes to all of these questions, then you are a trumpeter swan. Please report to the Trumpeter Swan Society so they can fit you with a neckband and appropriate tags. Although these white waterfowl can now be observed throughout much of North America, it wasn't long ago that there was a genuine concern that they may become extinct. The story of the trumpeter swan is one of North America's greatest conservation success stories, but as recently as 1935, there were only 69 trumpeter swans left in the contiguous United States. Many in the mid-20th century believed that trumpeter swans would soon become extinct, just like passenger pigeons and panty raids. So, how did these milky marvels reach the brink of extinction in the first place? Well, to understand their demise, let's first consider the time period when Europeans began arriving in North America. Struck by the incredible beauty and majesty of trumpeter swans, the colonists were compelled to shoot as many trumpeter swans as possible. Alas, these bugling birds were not the most flavorful food. Just like the Polly Pocket clothes that we all chewed on as kids, mature trumpeter swans were described as chewy and hardly edible. But that didn't stop people from trying. Although adult trumpeter swans aren't the most appetizing in day, many quickly discovered that the immature birds made for good eating. Not yet saddled by the burden of a swan mortgage or the many other stresses of adult swan life, immature birds possessed tender flesh that once made them a delicacy. While trumpeter swan numbers were reduced by hungry humans, greater losses were driven by the desire for body parts of trumpeter swans. The most popular item made from these birds was a cosmetic powder puff, but trumpeter swan bodies were also used to create hats and quill pens. Ironically, even the renowned ornithologist John James Audubon preferred to use trumpeter swan quills for his creative endeavors. An insatiable demand for these supersized swans was taking shape, and this soon forced the remaining trumpeters to hide in the most remote reaches of Canada and Alaska. Fortunately, conservationists recognized the demise of these birds and banded together to save this species. Today, trumpeter swan populations are experiencing impressive success. The trumpeter swan is the Moby Dick of North American birds. Being the heaviest and longest birds native to the continent, mature individuals are entirely white except for their black bills and eyes. Meanwhile, young birds have gray plumage that is gradually replaced with white feathers as the birds age. Trumpeter swans are well named, and these vocal birds make a range of noises that sound like someone trying to blow through a trumpet filled with shaving cream. Being the largest bird in North America has its perks. Most notably, few predators dare to attack adult trumpeter swans. While staying alive is cool and all, being a tremendous trumpeter also has its drawbacks. For instance, trumpeter swans are unbalanced and clumsy on land, moving with a waddle that makes them look like they're on the verge of shitting themselves. Despite their enormous size, they are strong flyers once they get airborne. But this is no easy task. Like a feathered jetliner, trumpeter swans require a substantial runway to get airborne. The act of taking flight is almost always preceded by repeated nods of the head, making them look like high schoolers who are too cool to dance at homecoming. Most people regard swans as peaceful creatures that placidly paddle along ponds, but anyone who has observed these sinister swans knows that they don't appreciate those who intrude on their personal space. Like a Karen who can't speak with the manager, trumpeter swans demonstrate their displeasure by biting and slapping their counterparts. Winter is the most peaceful time of year for swans, as they are not concerned with territoriality or breeding during this season. Still, tempers can flare when trumpeter swans encroach on each other while foraging in the winter. These wonderful water birds seek shallow wetlands, ponds, lakes, and other peaceful freshwater habitats for migration and breeding. Here, they eat aquatic vegetation and the occasional fish. After the breeding season, trumpeter swans may migrate hundreds of miles to a winter location, or they may remain in the vicinity of their breeding territory. In any case, they will spend the winters on large, open bodies of water, such as rivers, reservoirs, or quarries, where they typically eat grains. Considering Amorous avians, trumpeter swans show far more loyalty to their mate than most other birds. They are certainly not the friskiest of fowl, as they rarely seek extra pair copulations. Instead, they remain loyal to their same mate throughout the breeding season. Trumpeter swans reach breeding age around three or four years old. They will stay with their partner for many years if the pair experiences good breeding success and health. Both males and females build the nest, 
an effort that can take up to a month. Considering the amount of time that trumpeter swans may commit to building a nest, you probably assume that their home is an architectural masterpiece. Alas, swans are not the most innovative or productive birds, as the best a pair can do after a month of work is construct a nest that is a literal giant mound of vegetation. Once the nest is complete, the female will begin laying her clutch, which typically numbers four to six eggs. Trumpeter swans have an interesting way of incubating their eggs. Instead of incubating their eggs with a brood patch like a normal bird, the evolving embryos are incubated by their mother's feet. When trumpeter cygnets emerge from their cramped calcified confinements and prepare for life outside of an egg, they are ready for action, as they can walk, swim, and forage almost immediately. Although there are not presently any subspecies of trumpeter swans recognized, ornithologists have divided the species into three unique populations. First is the Pacific Coast population, a group characterized by birds breeding in Alaska and wintering along the Pacific Coast. This population contained the most birds in the 1960s, which was crucial for this species' recovery. Today, about 25,000 swans make up the Pacific Coast population. Next is the Rocky Mountain population. This subset of trumpeter swans breeds in western Canada and states like Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Only about 12,000 birds exist in this population. Finally, there is the interior population, a group that breeds in the Great Plains and Midwest. Although this population had the fewest birds in the 1960s, it contains the most birds today, with more than 27,000 trumpeter swans. Overall, trumpeter swans have made an incredible recovery, with more than 63,000 in existence today. Thanks to conservation efforts from some incredible ornithologists, it appears that these great white waterfowl are here to stay.